Africa and welcome to another exciting edition of AU Talks and AU Talks is brought to you by the Association of African Universities headquarters here in Accra, Ghana. Don't forget that you can join the discussion via social media platforms, Association of African Universities on Facebook and AAU underscore 67 on Twitter. Today we have a very exciting conversation and I'm so excited because we are going to discuss STEM and that is science, technology, engineering, mathematics. It's one of the fields that a lot of us run away from. But I believe that at the end of the discussion, if you are a young person out there, maybe you know what are your level or whatever, you would develop some interest in going into some of the STEM um, areas and the fields that we are going to discuss today. I'll go for a short break and when I return, I will let you know my guest. Stay tuned. The Association of African Universities in partnership with the All African Students Union and Al Azhar University Egypt calls on African universities to participate in the first African Universities Olympics. Theme Uniting African Universities through sports and recreation. Mapping out strategies to achieve the Africa we want. The disciplines include basketball, soccer, long jump, triple jump, shot put, javelin, sprints, and a whole lot more. The teams will be formed according to the five geopolitical regions of Africa, namely West, East, South, North, and Central Africa. Venue, Al-Azhar University, Cairo, Egypt. Date, 14th to 18th of March, 2019. Register now on blog.aau.org and also stand the chance of visiting the pyramids of Giza and other interesting sites in Cairo. For more information, visit blog.aau.org or call plus 233-2432-98464. Welcome back from the break and you are still watching AU Talks. AU Talks is brought to you by the Association of African Universities. My name is Kwesi Sam, and today on the show, like I told you before, we are discussing STEM, and that is science, technology, engineering, mathematics. I know most of you are afraid of this subject, but today we'll go into details and discuss it very well. Now, to help us with the discussion, we are privileged to have Dr. Connie Chow, and she is the founder and the CEO of The Exploratory, and she's going to help us dissect the, the subject. You are welcome to AU Talks, Doc. Thank you for having me, Kwesi. How are you? I am very well. Great. I'm, I'm so much privileged to meet you because I, I've heard a little about you, and I'm so excited <laughs> to meet you in person. And uh, especially we are tackling one of the most important subjects for us as Africans, how we'll be able to move from the humanities field, the social sciences, and then take the poop by its horn, mm -hmm. and then train a lot more people in the STEM areas. But before we even look at the, the, the subject, we want to know a bit about you, the very good things that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. We want the whole world to know who is Dr. Connie Chow. Sure. Um, Again, thank you for having me, mm. Apicia Park. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> so I, you've been coming to Ghana. I have been coming time. for okay. some time. Okay. So I've been coming to Ghana for about 10 years, oh. and uh, I am a molecular biologist by training. Okay. So I received my PhD in the US mm. uh, at Harvard University. You may have heard of it. Yes. Um, and uh, I then started uh, working at a women's college. Mm. Uh, what I have found when I was teaching there is that a lot of young women come into the university mm. um, not prepared uh, to take on science mm -hmm. uh, because they were, as you said, afraid of science and Absolutely. mathematics mm. in their senior secondary or junior high school. So that led me to become really interested in pre-university education okay. because, as you said, you know, we need to get those young right people interested before mm -hmm. we can actually have additional ones to train. Mm. So I... Um, spend some your time at the university uh, working on a national grant uh, okay. that trained teachers and then in turn they worked with both university students who were peer leaders for uh, to train some young people who came onto the university campus for mm -hmm. a summer program mm -hmm. that got me really interested in this k-12 education okay. 
And so uh, after some time, I decided I'm not sure university teaching is uh, completely for me, but okay. also an opportunity came up for me to mm -hmm. uh, run an organization in the U.S. called Science Club for Girls. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I did that for about eight years, and that is a, a uh, organization that uh, trains university students, especially female students, uh, to do hands-on practical experiences mm -hmm. with, uh, with uh, young girls who are in primary and high mm -hmm. school. During that time, I started coming to Ghana okay. um, and started working with a few schools in Pokwasi. Mm -hmm. uh, and so maintained that project sort of as my own personal side project mm -hmm. over several years. And when I left Science Club for Girls about uh, four years ago, okay. um, I took this Ghana project with me and started the Exploratory. So the Exploratory, as you uh, might imagine, the name is a combination of two words, mm -hmm. uh, exploration exactly. as well as laboratory. Mm -hmm. um, and that's um, and the goal of the organization is to make st STEM education more relevant, yeah. more equitable, uh, because we focus on girls as well as, you know, kids who are from under uh, privileged People areas right. uh, to make it joyful mm -hmm. because you know that we want to drive the fear out of STEM exactly. and have people experience that mm -hmm. aha moment mm -hmm. um, and to, to have it be collaborative collaborative in terms of you know understanding that STEM is an area where people work together mm -hmm. on that level, as well as collaborative in terms of organizations working together. Okay. Uh, partly it's because we also take a whole child approach, so we certainly want to improve their uh, knowledge and understanding of STEM subjects. We want to encourage more of them to consider careers mm -hmm. in that those fields, fields okay. uh, by getting them to understand and see people who are doing that work and understanding that you know STEM is a tool by which they can make their communities and their countries okay. and Africa a better place. Okay. So before we even go into finding out why you chose Ghana uh -huh. out of the 54 <laughs> countries on the African continent, yes. we'd want to even find out in the very first place, at what point did you discover that you had interest in, in science growing up? Uh huh. Good question. And what what actually um, motivated or encouraged you to go through the, that that uh, discipline? Yeah. So probably in my second year of school, actually, mm. um, I just remember it's a very uh, a tech a picture book that I had, okay. which uh, had animals in it. I grew up in Hong Kong actually. Okay. So mm. it is a very it's you know it's a city we have a lot of trees but not a lot of wildlife. Okay. And so uh, when I got that book uh, what I realized was there was a whole new world out there mm -hmm. um, that I didn't really know about and that's what science to me continue to represent. Absolutely. Uh, I study I ended up studying uh, microbiology in university and one of the things that I say is when you look at a microscope or when you have a lens of understanding science mm. you, you you have a special power because now you're looking at the world and the interactions within mm. it through a completely different lens because you're looking at things as, the, as you can consider the world in astronomical scales Absolutely. as well as microscopic scales. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that has always been really exciting for me to, you know, how, how do we go beyond the surface exactly. um, and understand mechanisms. Yeah, so that is how I, I find your intervention very relevant because you are not, as a, as a professor or as an academic in a university, I mean, you can enjoy the luxury and everything that you want, but you have that vision of tackling the, the problem right from the onset. That is why we, or personally, I find your intervention very wonderful. But then, how do we start from, from the scratch? Like the case that you had. Well, um, children are natural scientists, right? Absolutely. I mean, you mm. see a baby or a toddler, and they are picking things up. They are looking at it and sure. considering it. Mm. They're pushing things 50 times off the table, mm -hmm. you know, looking for a reaction and see and testing their environment at all times, and so. It's, I think one of the jobs that we have is mm. to encourage okay. right, and nurture that natural curiosity that children already have about the world. Mm. Um, unfortunately, it's schooling uh, a lot of times and tests um, suppresses 
this you know ability Absolutely. and you know, exactly. natural curiosity sure. of asking questions mm -hmm. of trying to understand and so that's what we through the exploratory and through the hands-on experiences that we bring mm -hmm. to the children um, are trying to bring back and um, and so I'll talk about how our programming works. Okay. So we, we rely on three pillars uh, in our intervention and mm -hmm. our programming. One is to train facilitators who are basically teachers okay. of science. Uh, and we work with uh, teachers and children who are in upper primary and junior high school okay. here in Ghana. So you, you don't start from the the lower primary yeah we don't quite but okay. you know we, we we begin to see you know shifts in their attitude around okay. you know the upper primary the upper primary mm. and so you know that's when our intervention starts at some point in time we would love to mm. but I think you know the the current um, and they don't tackle that much science okay. currently okay. but anyway um, so we work with the teacher facilitators yeah. and then um, and we provide them with workshops where they themselves get to experience hands-on science, mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of them, especially those in primary school, have not really experienced. Mm -hmm. And as I said, it's not only just about the activities and how to put things together um, or you know what the concepts behind it is. Mm -hmm. One of the really important things for us that we call a successful training is when the teachers experience the joy Absolutely. that comes with that ah, I made something happen. I made a light bulb light up. Okay. I, you know, I saw something under the microscope with my own eyes that I've never seen before. So prior to your training, how, if I'm to ask you the behavioral terms of the teachers, how, 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 how did you see them before, before the training? Were they, were they good? Did they exhibit any knowledge? Um, did you find their content of training very relevant? And then the after the intervention also? So most teachers, uh, as, especially since we work with in-service teachers, mm, right? Okay. So they have variable training, right? Okay. Some teachers have master's degrees mm -hmm. in science. Some of them only have a diploma. Okay. Um, and so, uh, and the amount of um, professional development they have received subsequently also varies. Mm. So for those who um, have not had a lot of training prior or up to the point that they come to us, Obviously, if they've come to us, they have a little bit of interest, right, Absolutely. already sure. in improving how they teach. Mm. And uh, but what we have seen is that uh, they, if they don't understand the subject, all they can do to be responsible, if you will, is to copy what they see in the textbook mm -hmm. onto the page, recite what is in the textbook, and make sure that the children are able to recite mm -hmm. that. Uh, I remember a P4 teacher running up to me with a textbook page opened up to a uh, page where they have to teach electronics. Mm -hmm. And she said, OK, there are three diagrams here. And one of them shows that the LED, the LED light, mm -hmm. can turn on, and one cannot. And sh because she has very little training before that, uh, she could not even interpret the diagram to understand okay. that the battery was in the wrong direction. Okay. So but once I pointed that out to her, she's like, aha. And then she was able to combine what we had done in the teacher training, mm -hmm. which is for them to actually act out how a current okay. flows. Um, and she's like, okay, now I can explain this and to my children. And that is the aha experience. And that is the aha <laughs> experience, okay. for example, for her. That's great. Um, yes. So then um, let, let's move to the next step. Mm -hmm. you, you've spoken about the, the facilitators workshop. Yeah. And then you also have the exploratory um, clubs. clubs. Okay. So before we go to the exploratory club, so mm -hmm. we have the, uh, the teacher training. Mm. And then we uh, actually provide them with practical teaching and learning materials. So some of them could be really cheap materials that, they, that we can purchase in the market. Mm. Um, and as we have grant funding coming in, we, would, we have brought them more sophisticated equipment okay. from you know, small pocket microscopes to you know, a, a compound microscopes microscope, mm. uh, you know, sufficient quality uh, to tablet computers, mm -hmm. etc., so that uh, they can also do uh, technology and coding. Okay. So, um, so we, ha we, we bring them those materials. So at the workshops, they become familiar with using those materials. Mm -hmm. But as we know, sometimes you give teachers training and it's like go going to church. 
You get really <laughs> excited and inspired and say, I'm going to do my, tra my teaching very differently. But the knowledge transfer and application. But once you go back mm. to your school, it's difficult because exactly. you're in the, your same environment and habits are hard to break. Same with the equipment. Sometimes mm -hmm. you, we have heard of interventions where people give you like lovely equipment, but then it gets locked in the principal's office, office because show. they don't want them to break or mm. get spoiled or mm. broken. So we have these clubs, that STEM clubs, that meet basically you know, once a week. Mm. And we invite smaller groups of students uh, to be part of that club. Uh, most of them are girls. Okay. Uh, and then it gives us space and time for the teachers who have been trained in the workshops to practice the pedagogy, mm. to become familiar with the equipment and materials that we have provided for them. Okay. And it gives also a space, obviously, because we're interested in girls' education, mm -hmm. for the girls to be able to ask questions, for themselves to actually play with and experience this firsthand hands-on practical experience. Okay. And then, uh, then two things happen, right? One is the teachers become more confident. Mm. They're able to take uh, what they have learned. Um, and as well as the materials back in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, material, the classroom generally have many more students. Exactly. But then these young uh, exploratory members who have uh, experience now using the equipment or you know, doing these experiments, they serve as teaching assistants mm -hmm. uh, in the classroom. Oh, sure. So uh, even though the numbers that we officially have in the clubs are small, mm. the impact extends uh, throughout the school, okay. uh, both in terms of the exploratory teachers who are teaching their own classes, mm. but we also know that other teachers might come to our teachers and say, hey, can you please come and do a demonstration do in my class? Show. Or in the case of junior high teachers who may mm. be more uh, familiar w with, the, with the practicals, they might say, hey, can I borrow the equipment so that I can actually do this demonstration or okay. do this activity? Okay, so what happens um, with, with, a, with a student? And that is the, when they are, they are the class that you have. And I'm particularly interested in finding how you're able to break that barrier and fear that um, young people have when it comes to the STEM related field. I just, I'm just envisaging the first day, how the experience is for a young girl to just have that confidence and even um, hold any electronic device and, and what have you. Things have changed, mm -hmm. but in uh, the, the area that you are doing the, the study and that you have any intervention, how is the experience or how was the experience of the student right from the, the onset? Yeah. So. Of course, not everybody um, comes in to the clubs mm. confident, right? Sure. And so part of getting the training that we have for the teachers uh, addresses that to some extent, right? So two things. One is we emphasize during uh, the training and mm. the facilitator workshops that science and engineering is about learning to fail and try again. Okay. So it's not just about getting the right answer, mm -hmm. it's about playing and tinkering, and, uh, and so that's a large component of what it means to be a scientist, oh, and, and, and that is an important part of transmitting it to the girls. Mm. And then, as you said, girls generally are not interested in science, mm -hmm. so we spend a lot of time uh, during the training itself, okay. getting the teachers to think about their own unconscious bias um, as well as the gen gender stereotypes mm -hmm. that leads girls to be not <laughs> confident. Okay. And so the combination allows them to come to the clubs uh, ready to tell the students that mm. it's okay, you know, that you, di you didn't get it right the first time. And it's okay, you know, you just it. want to try, you mm. just want to try it. And maybe the first time you're just, you know, watching and that's okay. But the second time, uh, maybe you can give it a, a turn. Okay. And when, and during the clubs, the kids also work together. And uh, some of the clubs, uh, many of the clubs actually are multi-age, so we may have multiple grades. Mm -hmm. So some of the older students will also help encourage the younger kids. Okay. So what we have seen and heard from the girls themselves is repeatedly, I used to think that science is a difficult topic, mm -hmm. and now it's easy because they have the experience. Um, and then the other thing that we hear is, 
Uh, this one particular girl, I remember, you know, we had um, an intern of ours did a focus group with them, and she said, I used to shake um, in class and almost cry when uh, the teacher asked me a question. Mm. Um, and now, because she has the opportunity to practice and both answering and uh, responding to questions in the clubs. She said, you know, now when I'm in the class, um, I, you know, I offer uh, an answer. Mm -hmm. And we definitely know from other teachers in the schools, for example, that uh, they kind of can tell which of the kids uh, are from the exploratory. Okay. Because those are the kids who are, you know, you raising the their hands and, and answer questions. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, right. you know, it's built up. Okay, right. so uh, apart from the the facilitators training and mm -hmm. then also the exploratory clubs, you, there's a third thing that you do. Is there any third intervention? Yeah, so in, in addition to the clubs themselves, mm. right, uh, since our goal partly is to open girls and boys' mm. eyes about, you know, the possibility of I science. I like it when you add boys this time around. Yes, so mm. about 15% of our uh, club members okay. are boys. Okay. So uh, we still want to create an environment where, you know, girls get more of the opportunities. Right. Uh, but in any case, so, but we understand that especially in underprivileged areas, boys also don't have, have a lot those, of challenges. You know, challenges. Sure. Yep. So um, anyway, so we want them to be able to see themselves or people like them mm -hmm. uh, doing and practicing science and engineering. So in addition to school-based clubs, we do several things. Um, one of them is role model visits. Okay. So for example, during a term where they would be studying about the human body, mm -hmm. um, they are doing their experiments and measurements and running around measuring their heart rates and building models of lungs. Mm -hmm. We also invite other people who are maybe physiotherapists or okay. um, nurses, doctors, doctors um, engineers, uh, en engineers mm. who are creating devices, okay. um, an and orthopedic school, for example, or creating you know, uh, prosthetic limbs, for example. Mm -hmm. We invite them to come and speak to our kids okay. so that they can see, oh, other Ghanaians are actually doing this, and many of them are women, um, mm -hmm. and they may have similar backgrounds as I do, mm -hmm. um, and they are doing these, uh, they are helping their community with, uh, through, through STEM. Okay. And so that's one way that we inspire them. Okay. The other is that, uh, again, we want to make STEM education relevant mm -hmm. for the kids. So we have also created these uh, design challenges mm. so that they get to apply what they have learned in uh, their to homes a, to a different situation that's fine and um and so we've had two design well the challenges so far so going back to this idea of the human body mm -hmm. so we pose them two different questions we said hey Mm, let's imagine that you know there's a new person who is a public health official who's come into town and his job is to tell others about the dangers of secondhand smoke okay. however there are many people who are illiterate mm -hmm. and so how can you create something visual um, and a model for them to to use to to convey this information so that was one challenge for mm -hmm. the younger kids. So they create the models, you know, some use soot and, you know, bottles so mm -hmm. that they can actually uh, see. Um, the other was uh, to say, hey, maybe there's a teacher who is uh, going away and now you're in charge of, you know, teaching the class. The class and okay. you want, and your head teacher wants to challenge you to create a working model of, uh, of the lung or circulatory system. Oh. So they they used tubing you know whatever they can find in the environment and you know build um build working models that you know the, where you can see liquids you know passing around okay. etc so that improves the understanding of uh of um of the topic yeah. uh they see the world differently because now they're like that's not a piece of trash that's something can that i can for use exactly. for something else exactly. and stem is something that i can use to help you mm. know uh, convey and help other people understand things. Mm -hmm. The other really uh, exciting design challenge that we had was um, around Doomsaw. Okay. So, uh, 
So, and I will back up. We call our design challenges Soul for Ghana. Okay. So that kids are already thinking about that, you know, whatever I'm doing or designing is about, you know, what I can do and help my community and mm -hmm. my country. Mm -hmm. So we gave them a challenge, say, unfortunately, Doomsaw happens. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, or, you know, some of you don't have light. So how do you create something that uh, will help you study during those times? Okay. So uh, they, w we had in the previous term uh, had these science sets, which a Ghanaian inventor created, um, yes. that we have been using. And so we, uh, we said, you know, you can use the science set or other things that you have learned about mm -hmm. uh, electricity and electronics to create what you want. And so their, their solutions ranged all the way from uh, salt water generators mm -hmm. uh, that can and wind turbines oh. uh, to a simple light box that they can use to sit around and study. And the young woman mm. princess who invented this light box with her team, she actually uses it in her house. Uh, her house is in Merkusu, and okay. it is an unfinished house mm. and so uh, she has since that time invited her friends to come study at night they gather around and That's because they are lights on four sure. uh, I can send you a picture later yeah. <laughs> about that That'd be interesting. and Great. because of that mm. uh, that opportunity she also um, and then you know this uh, Charles mm -hmm. Ofori the Ghanaian inventor he when he was exhibiting his um, his invention, he brought Princess along and she met Angela Merkel. Mm. So. <laughs> That's great. So, so it gives, these opportunities gives our kids a chance to see that, you know, they are not only consumers mm -hmm. of the information, that is not just as we exactly. say chew and pour, and pour but, they, but is actually you know things that they can do mm. in their environment Great. and in their homes. Yes, I am quick to find out. Out of the 54 countries in Africa, why did you choose Ghana? <laughs> and then when you come to Ghana, we have 10 regions, we have several clusters of schools, but why did you choose Pokwasi or the schools in the Pokwasi enclave? Okay, so. Uh, we chose Ghana, well, it's related because we already have a, I, uh, in the organization that mm. have a prior relationship with a particular microfinance organization okay. um, in Pokwasi at that mm. time. And, uh, and we understood Pokwasi at that time, well, 10 years ago, it was, you know, less Rural, developed, exactly. right? It's sort of like peri-urban, not quite like the bedroom community sure. for Accra as it is mm -hmm. now. Um, so there's that. But the relationship with that microfinance -orga organization, which also had some um, education uh, uh, programs, mm. was important because we try not to go into a, a random community and say, sure. hey, we are here, we are bringing science, please mm -hmm. take it. Mm -hmm. But by working with the local organization who understands the community, exactly. uh, we're better able to develop relationships. And that's even a much more sustainable way of, exactly. of handling it. So. And so subsequently, we have uh, expanded to uh, Ensuam and Berkuso, as okay. I mentioned, mm -hmm. and some schools in Accra. And, uh, and those are also because we have partnerships with other organizations, mm -hmm. in the case of Ensawam, another organization that's supporting girls' uh, school fees, mm. and et cetera, so that they can continue to go to school. Okay. And then the other organization, uh, College for Ama, they provide uh, term break, like August break mm -hmm. uh, interventions okay. for young people women. While they are still at home. Well, yep. Mm. And so they, they get additional tutoring in English, math, and science, etc. Okay. So again, they understand the school. We already have an introduction. And we know that they are supported in other ways so that mm. our science programs is a value added, right? Okay. Because um, as I sometimes tell my staff, you know, I could go to, a, you know, it, it doesn't quite make sense for us to go to a really poor community. Mm. Uh, that may be lacking a lot of basic needs because a science set is probably not what they need sure. and when they need water. Mm -hmm. And um, especially for someone coming from outside, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a consideration of what we call dignity, right? Mm -hmm. If people, people uh, need a lot of things mm -hmm. and if you offer them something, they will say yes, but they may not be the thing that they need the most. Yeah, exactly. So we make sure that we have that conversation and um, that is mediated by a local partner okay. to make sure that you know we're not 
just imposing ourselves. Okay, so it means that um, the kids who are in the exploratory clubs, they kind of see the day to day or they see the relevance of the content and everything that is done. They're able to relate it to their normal life, everyday life, and they have much more deeper understanding of the, the, the STEM or science related programs much more than their counterparts who are not part of the club, right? I believe so. Mm. Um, you know, certainly people's family circumstances, you know, are, are sure. different, but mm. for the most part. So, again, for example, we hear uh, some young people would say, I used to be, I, it used to be that I want to be an accountant, mm. right? Um, but now, uh, because they have done some coding and they have seen, you know, other IT professionals come in to talk to them. They okay. said, now I want to be to go into information technology okay. and they give specific reasons, right? Okay. So, so that I can develop educational tools to help other young people study better. Mm -hmm. So it's not because, oh, I just interacted with this person and I want to be that because, you know, teenagers do that, okay. but they, they find a deeper reason for, um, for for, for the inclination okay. for those particular All right, we'll go for a short break, and okay. when we return, we'll be looking at, number one, what has been the challenges so far, and then also we want to know what are the steps forward, because I would love that such an intervention, um, every school in, in Ghana is, is part of it, and then we'll also know what happens in a regular um, training process, especially during the facilitator session and also during the, the student sessions as well. Okay. Viewers, you are still watching AU Talks and today we are discussing STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and we are privileged to have Dr. Connie Chow and she is doing justice to the subject. Stay tuned, we'll go for a short break. Are you an institution or individual? Do you intend to organize a memorable event to be archived for future reference? Then look no further than AAU Studios because it's your best bet. With our spacious studio and state-of-the-art media equipment such as 4K Panasonic video cameras, Kinoflow lights, assorted microphones, live streaming machines and others, you are sure to get the best of production. Visit us at Trinity Avenue, East Legon, adjacent the National Accreditation Board or contact the AAU Studio via the following addresses. Info at aau.org, aautv at aau.org, ransford at aau.org. Alternatively, you can call us on 0244-185-998 or 0244 693342. Welcome back from the break, and we are still watching AU Talks. We still have Dr. Kani Cho, um, Chow, sorry, in the studio, and we are looking at the STEM related programs and how best our young kids will be able to take advantage of um, the spectrum of programs under STEM. And so, Doc, before we left for the break, we were about looking at on a normal day, what happens during the training? Um, I am even much more interested in finding out, is it part of the, the curriculum, um, your intervention is part mm -hmm. of the curriculum, or is it just an extra um, curriculum activity where when the student close from school, um, those who are part of the clubs are kept and they are taken through um, the materials and then the content that you have? Okay, so I'll, I'll talk about the training first and then I'll talk about the clubs. That's fine. So the training uh, happens over, uh, generally, we have an intense, more intensive training during mm. uh, the August break uh, for the teachers, which goes from about three to four days. Mm. And um, generally the training has several components. Okay. One is to th have teachers think about the idea that they are designers of learning experiences. Mm -hmm. They're not just conveyors of information, but uh, to consider both the, uh, the emotional um, environment, if mm. you will, of the classroom, mm -hmm. as well as how the materials get presented. So we have them think about, as I mentioned previously, uh, especially for girls, right, mm. how they are or not calling on girls, for sure. example, mm. how they respond to students' answers, whether they respond with, no, that is not right, mm -hmm. or that's an interesting idea. Let's explore that further, mm. for example. And, and we model that as we're doing the training uh, for the teachers. So if during the, uh, if we expect them to have the kids work in small groups, okay. then when they're in the training sessions, they also work in small groups. Mm. Uh, if I want them to respond <laughs> 
to a question with a question to push them to think harder, then we do the same thing with them during okay. the training. So that's one component. And of course, you know, they have chances to, uh, to, f to play with uh, the, the materials that we have. And often we have teachers who may have uh, taught with us for a longer time mm. be, uh, create those particular uh, stations where they are actually doing the activity. Okay. And as I said, you know, we also have a pretty extensive uh, session where we have the teachers think about, you know, the expectations for boys versus girls mm. during this uh, during the school day in the family, in the community, mm. in society, etc. So that they're really aware of, you know, the messages, subtle or not, that okay. are being given to the students. Mm. Um, so that's uh, and then you know one and then when we have particular new instruments, etc., or curriculum that we have. Then we uh, then we have special training sessions. Okay. In terms of the content, yeah. I would say probably about seventy percent of what we do is related to uh, the curriculum of the school. Okay. Uh, partly because that's what teachers want, because mm -hmm. they want to be better teachers mm -hmm. themselves, and it is important to them uh, to be able to uh, demonstrate because they're under uh, the same pressures mm -hmm. uh, that their students can pass exams and uh, uh, etc. Um, and then, but we also tell them, give us a little bit more space to test, you know, new and play with new curriculum okay. because sometimes, you know, science moves very quickly exactly. and we want your children to be exposed to ideas that are current and mm -hmm. or, you know, ideas they yeah, might want to under five years from now. Sure. So let's, 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 let's do that. And so that's the give and take that we have with the teachers. Okay. In terms of the clubs, mm. the clubs for the most part are actually held before or after school. Okay. Um, so there are a few cases where the teachers hold them maybe during assembly time, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera, to accommodate uh, some of the students who may have family or you know other chores mm. and obligations that they have to have. Okay. Um, nevertheless, I would say, you know, the clubs themselves uh, are important component for the teachers who mm. are completely dedicated, but also important especially for the girls. Okay. Because that gives the girls especially a space and time to call their own. Okay. Because as you s know, gender expectations a lot of times ask that girls, they need to go home and cook Learn and cook. fetch water <laughs> and this and that. Mm. Whereas when they come to clubs, club is their own time mm. because they are interested, that is what they want to do. Okay. And having leisure time is a right. <laughs> okay. Right? So who is eligible to be part of the exploratory club? So we actually let the uh, teachers select. We, mm. sell, we tell them two things. One is that, you know, uh, I, I know a lot of programs said, you know, select the poor, uh, the bright but needy kids. Mm -hmm. And we say, that's okay, you know, we can have some of those. But because our clubs f focus so much on hands-on learning, choose also those students who may actually not be very good at writing, no but, mm -hmm. you know, who are really good at uh, creativity, creativity and, and okay. making things, mm. etc. Uh, because that will give them the confidence mm. uh, to do better. Um, in school and other subjects. Okay. So we have a mix of, you know, the A students, right? Okay. So we, I think we just had a JHS3 uh, uh, girl who got ones in all her subjects. Mm. Um, so, you know, it, and you know, she was already a pretty good student, but mm. certainly participating in the club boosted that. Okay. Uh, but we also have other children, you know, like princess, mm. right, who, you know, may, English may not be, you know, her English may not be very good, but she's mm -hmm. very, very inventive. Okay. Now, the most important thing is that we want to even understand the challenges, um, because one of the basic things we, we have experienced is that in as, as, as they grow up the academic, um, academic ladder, they tend to fall off from the, the STEM areas into mm -hmm. the other disciplines. Yep. How does this intervention ensure that once the student starts with the STEM um, ideations, he or she is able to continue even up to the university level mm -hmm. and even pursue a career in, in the STEM field. Yep. So we can't do everything. <laughs> but, you know, as, as we said, you know, we're primarily focused on P4 to JHS3. Okay. That said, uh, what we are doing is two things. One, the teachers certainly play a big role mm. in um, encouraging the girls' uh, 
to select science as uh, a subject of study for okay. the SHS. And obviously, the current program of you know free SHS mm -hmm. helps uh, because previously a lot of the students that we had may be interested in science, but because of family pressure, yeah, etc., or cost, they are not able to select schools that concentrate in science. Okay. So that's one. Uh, the other is uh, we, as the explorator, is part of a larger ecosystem okay. um, called the Ghana STEM Network. And the National Society of Black Engineers mm. is one of those organizations, and they have senior secondary school chapters mm -hmm. um, in many of the schools. So we inform the teachers, who in turn inform the girls that you know there are these particular schools uh, with these chapters that would welcome you into their community when you are there. Okay. So we've made that connection. Mm. And similarly, you know, they also have chapters in uh, university. Mm. And so uh, hopefully, you know, that would be the bridge if they enter a senior high school with a chapter that, you know, they will be able to, to continue. Okay. We're continuing to look for, you know, role models and volunteers who can come and connect with the, with the girls mm -hmm. because um, as I always say, you know, you can't be what you can't see, mm -hmm. and uh, you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so once they have made that connection, um, that's important. The other uh, thing that we also do is um, related to that is uh, field trips, right? Okay. And why is that important? Again, you know, it helps whether it's uh, field trips to Legon or whether it's field trips to companies. Mm. It allows kids from these communities to actually step into places and say, oh, okay, this is a university or mm. okay, this is, you know, a particular company. That's so and amazing. It mm -hmm. is okay. I, yes. I, I feel like I can belong here and mm -hmm. I can speak here. And it, uh, it removes a lot of the the fear is that and encourages them to study hard yes to and sometimes you know they come in like oh it's air conditioned and it's <laughs> nice and cool i want to work here that's a great a great motivation mm -hmm. yes all right so your, your intervention is absolutely incredible Thank very you. fantastic and I, I believe it's one of the the best ways to ensure that kids have that kind of sustained passion right from the, the beginning even to to the end but I, I, I would love to see such an intervention, a beautiful and unique as this, um, in most of the schools in Ghana and even the other part of Africa. What is the plan, what, are, what is the vision or the long-term goal or vision of um, exploratory to ensure that you expand what you do now mm -hmm. and also move to the other part of the continent? Yeah, so to a uh, couple of challenges, you mm -hmm. know, funding is always a challenge. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, Anyone want to sponsor us? Let mm -hmm. us know. But um, two things. One is that uh, we're beginning to talk to the teachers and think about uh, whether it makes sense for us to, quote unquote, graduate them, mm -hmm. right? Because if we've been there with them for several years, part of the idea is that we have built their capacity. Sure. And so um, maybe the, it doesn't require us to monitor the clubs as mm -hmm. often and or transfer that monitoring to uh, the science education unit, mm -hmm. for example. That's one. And then the thinking about training, that's the other sort of resource intensive component. Uh, how we can engage teachers who have been teaching with us for several years and whom we know have really you know, built their capacity mm. for teaching in an engaging way and to encourage girls and have, that, have them become trainers for okay. us in their particular circuits. Mm. And so certainly we're looking for partnerships with both you know, education units okay. um, as well as particular girls education mm -hmm. units and science education okay. unit. That would be a beautiful connection mm -hmm. um, for us. Uh, going back to you know what I was telling you about the model that I had sure. um, in the U.S., where we actually were engaging university students, um, we can envision you know in certain areas of uh, of Ghana as well as you know Africa, mm -hmm. where you have a higher concentration of university students, mm -hmm. that we can actually create you know university chapters mm -hmm. so that they're actually partly supporting the teachers as well as directly you know okay. working with the girls as well. Okay. Um, so 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 those are some of the ideas that we have around expansion. Okay, that's beautiful. So if someone would want to partner with you mm -hmm. or want to be part of your intervention. How would they be able to do so? Yeah, so they can find us on the 
they can email us. Mm -hmm. um, so our website is the, T-H-E hyphen exploratory dot mm. org. Old. Okay. And so you can email me directly. So it's mm. Connie at the, explore, the dash exploratory dot org. Okay. And we'll respond. Uh, we will have, you know, we have staff members mm. on the ground. Okay. Um, and uh, I think part of what we're really envisioning is, um, I sometimes say, you know, we don't really need to grow an empire. The organization itself, you know, probably needs to grow just a little bit, okay. um, but not too much. But mm -hmm. you know, how do we uh, encourage others to uh, to take on the model of what we're doing and do it in their particular environments, countries, communities, okay. etc. All right. So this is beautiful. I, I I find one thing interesting on your flyer, which says a STEM plus love is equal to a better world. I believe that will be your your final statement or your final <laughs> word to to our, our viewers. Sure, so yes, our model is STEM plus love equals a better world. And the word love, uh, sometimes some people mm. don't like it because they're like, oh, that's too touchy-feely. But <laughs> yeah, it's really important for us mm. uh, because we focus on equity. Mm -hmm. So how do we think about you know uh, using STEM as a vehicle to make the world a more equitable place? Okay. And we think about it in three layers. One is what the work that we do brings confidence and a sense of mm. uh, self-worth, if you will, to the participants of our program. So the love is first and foremost self, about self. Mm -hmm. And once you have built that, uh, that sense of you know, efficacy, like I can do something, mm. Then it extends to the community. So STEM plus love for your community. What about, what, how are you how using the knowledge mm -hmm. that you have, whether it's in STEM or otherwise, to improve your community? And then there's the love about the planet, mm -hmm. right? There's the environment and you know habitats that we, and as we know, climate change is a big deal. Um, and even though the contributions of people here is mm -hmm. minor, mm -hmm. uh, we still have to be part of part thinking of. about those solutions. Okay. And so um, there's that entire uh, package, if you will, that we need to think about you know, how we can use STEM responsibly mm -hmm. so that we can improve the conditions for everyone All on right. this planet. Thank you so much, Dr. Chow, for Thank coming. You. And in fact, we've learned a lot from you and I, I, your, your intervention is fantastic. I might say it again, because you know, kids are creative right from the onset. As we're able to tackle the, the challenge from the beginning, then I believe that we'll have a better Africa and a better world. Thank you so much for coming. We are so much appreciative thank of your you, presence. Christy. Viewers, thank you so much for joining us once again. And this has been AU Talks, and we have been hosting Dr. Connie Chow, and she is the CEO and the founder of The Exploratory. Keep watching AU TV in 2019. We have a lot for you. My name is Chrissy Sam.